Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name's Brian. And I'm Ethan. And today we've got a Brawl Machine battle report for you. So this week I'm playing some Moss Harrigan. I talked to him about a bit him the last time I played uh, Morvana, so I wanted to bust him out this week, and he ended up being the list I dropped. Uh, so for his list, he's got a Blood Shaman, a Wild Argus, a Gorax, and then a Rip Horn Satyr, and then a Swamp Grabber Chef, Min Blood Trackers, Min Ravagers, and then the Chieftain is the Wreck option. And then for my specialists, I got a bunch of utility solos. Like I got a Night Witch, I got a Gallows Grove, I got a Shaman, and I got a White Mane. Just kind of like if I need Grievous, if I need an Arc Node, if I need magical weapons. Just trying to be as versatile as I can with the sideboard. I've decided to bring Axis in Destruction Initiative. So this Convergence Army's been in my possession for like less than eight hours already. And I just really wanted to play it and get it on the channel. Um, so... It's been a long time since I've played Convergence, but I've decided to bring an Assimilator, a Corollary, a Conservator, and an Inverter for the battle group. I figure that gives me a good, flexible uh, flexible battle group for Axis. Having a couple guys that have two melee attacks instead of a melee attack and a gun is really important to me, and I think the Assimilator can get around having Rat 2 with having the big AoE that he gets stapled to his, to his arm. For the non-battle group stuff, I've got an algorithmic dispersion opt effects just to get the... Uh, there's not much that Axis needs to arc. He might be able to get a cool like battering ram once in a while, but really it's just to increase the uh, induction range for these vectors. I did bring a unit of uh, attunement serv... Well, not a unit of inter attunement servitors, but I brought three attunement servitors. I figured the flare might be helpful for some things, and uh, my requisition is a unit of opt effects directive just to get some repair guys along with some utility in the um, in that unit as well with the magic weapons and pathfinder that they can hand out. Being as this army is really new to me and I wasn't, I just wanted to really get used to this one, I decided to not bring specialists with this one, but I definitely have some ideas for how you could build those out. So I won the roll, and then in typical Ethan fashion, I opted to go first. Uh, so my deployment's pretty central, which is a standard of Brawl Machine. My blood trackers, who prayed the inverter, are running up. And the, well, here I'm going to measure the inverter's walk and ground pounder threat. So I'm just staying outside of that just to be safe. Uh, but then the blood trackers are running up, all staying outside of there. Uh, I believe Mosser is going. He puts up Mirage on the Ravagers and Sun Hammer on himself. Uh, if you watch the 75 point game I played of him, I played him super aggressively. So I wanted to try and play him a little bit more reactively here in Brawl Machine, like leverage his upkeeps, leverage the Pillars of Salt just to try and slow the game down. Cause uh, I don't have any opportunities for a top of one cause he's got no AD, like top of one crevasses and stuff like that. But I'm gonna be, my game plan this game is to be defensive because I know Axis's feet is just going to be a nightmare but I've got to try and weather it and I'm hoping with pillars and maybe some chip damage from uh, the sun hammer that I'll be able to make it work and then they're basically battle groups just running up so other than just having to review some things real quick with Axis to see what it is I've got access to um not that I didn't look at anything that he that he had beforehand. It's just I'm still very new to this one, so just getting all of his upkeeps down, which ones I need to have out right away. I decide to start off with like Iron Aggression being the one that I throw out first. I think I'm also doing some induction math here to figure out how I can get everything onto the uh, corollary. So I decide to just pass out a couple focus so that it can jump around a little bit and uh, and transfer back to the corollary. Uh, the first thing up is the inverter running just to get up in the business with being speed eight or speed four. I'd rather have him super far forward. Uh, he also is Ethan's prey target and takes a big old sun hammer to the face. Ooh, that was, those sun hammer damages. Yep. And, and here comes a conservator. Now we, we have the sun hammer damage go off here first, but I think I, I, I remember not remember. Like I, I know better that Tharn can charge through forest and have pathfinder. So I decide to back him out of their threat range instead of just give Ethan a heavy right away. So he's staying a little bit safer, and that means that Sunhammer doesn't happen to him. 
So the next thing that I end up doing here is run a servitor out to that trench because Ethan and I are kind of having like a solo off over here with this gobber ready to take the flag and then I'm going to have my servitor doing the same. And I do see an opportunity to cross my uh, inverter, or not inverter, the assimilator over and shoot a pie plate out at the, uh, the blood trackers. Now I get super duper lucky and my scatter ends up rolling three inches to the one and that ends up clipping four of those blood trackers. So this is really huge for me on turn one yeah it was literally the best drift you could get and like i had clumped up once i realized i was out of ground pounder threat so like that was unfortunate yep so i, I grabbed three of them one three. of them i decided to not i decided not to break armor on um but the corollary now is full up with focus and uh and that works for me uh axis kind of plays a little bit more aggressive but I, I, I guess I didn't charge him forward. I just kind of walked him forward and put iron aggression on the inverter and then just kind of left him camping. The rest of the Optifex directive move up just to get into position to either pathfinder the inverter if they need to or repair anything that gets damaged. So losing three blood trackers bottom of one is very, very not good. Uh, because they're not only like my Sands of Fate targets and like they help me leverage assassination. They're my primary way of shutting down counter charge. Because if you don't know, Axis's field marshal is counter charge. So like I have to respect that all game and try and stop it from going off if I need to send in a Ravager. Because all of his heavies, if they connect with Matt 7, pretty much it's a tougher die and then I'm knocked down. So... I upkeep Mirage, I upkeep Sunhammer, so there I'm just miraging forward. Everything's out of my threat, so there's not much they can do. It's I'm in a weird spot. Like I can't stay out of the zones and be relevant and be safe from Axis's feet and still like contribute. So like, Yeah, if you stay if you stay far far away from Axis, you're still gonna get caught by that feat and then you just don't take up any real estate. Yep. So here the blood trackers go, they all stay out of counter charge threat and they're chucking spears. Uh, with their prey, their dice minus seven, weapon masters. So they're doing some pretty good chip damage, I believe. After the third one goes, I've crippled I think his left arm. Yep, I've which is his not macro pummeler. Yep, so if like if I would have had a full unit there's chance I could have maybe killed him, which would have been nice because the way I was spiking there, I probably wouldn't have killed him, but I might have taken out more systems, but the ADO was right there. But it was more of like just leveraging them to be spaced out. There, I'm respecting his feet charge threat, and then the Ravagers are just moving up to contest the flag. I can't really stay out of uh, all of his threats, so like I'm putting a couple up where his heavies can get to, and then the rest are staying back. And I only have one Ravager in range of the zone, or in range of the flag. <clears throat> and I'm just trying to move up. Mossera's going, and I'm trying to figure out where I want to put pillars. I do, like, I'm thinking in my head that I should be swapping Mirage to the Riphorn for next turn. Because he's not going to be able to charge. He's neg 2 speed, so, like, Mirage kind of just negates that. But I don't think his heavy is going to be up far enough where I could even catch it with Mirage. So I end up just putting down a pillars in front of the inverter. And then I'm just trying to figure out... Uh, Brian did put up a razor wall. And yeah. I think when I place the pillars, it would auto take a point. Even though when I place it, it's not a model until it's fully resolved. But I opted not to just put it on the razor wall because I didn't feel like looking that up. And then all my Warbeasts are just going up and riling. And then pass and turn and hoping... <laughs> So I think this for sure is going to be feet turn for me. There's no uh, there's no reason for me to hold it any longer. And uh, Axis's feet is always nice when you can get some aggressive value out of it and then capitalize on the defensive value in it as well. So I think uh, the only thing that I might do a little backwards here is not keep the corollary by a Axis when I feet. So that's like there's a lot of – the thing about Convergence is there's a lot of moving parts to the faction even when it comes to a really – um, straightforward caster like Axis. 
at least I feel like he's straightforward. I mean, his counter charges are not straightforward. But I mean, he's straightforward compared to the other casters. Yeah, I think. yeah, for sure. I mean, like going from like someone like Axis to Orion is a really big difference. Yeah, or even like Locke or Mom. Yep, they, there's just always something screwbally with some of with the rest of them. I think Lucan might be straightforward too. Yeah, he's but, probably the most straightforward. Yeah, but the so I'm I'm trying to figure out exactly what it is I want to do here, and in order to broadcast my feet a little deeper i decide to make a a gutsy play here and say you know what axis i'm gonna get whiffed by the doppelganger or the doppelbark dog whatever it is the moon no not moon how wild, wild argus and uh so i need to if i put axis up this far there's a good chance i could could be taking a lot of damage from this from ethan's army uh, the big thing is, I would just want to try and stay away out or stay out of the range of the or threat range of the goat, um, which without him being able to trample when I feed is is not going to be much of a problem. So I decide to unpack Axis into this Tharn Ravager that's in the middle of the zone, and uh, I feed right here. I don't cat the. I think the only thing that I don't catch is the Swamp Gobber, and then I guess the 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 Blood Shaman up on the flag as well. So I get everything other than that. Maybe one Blood Tracker's safe. But, no, the Blood Tracker was in. Okay, so uh, I hit the the Ravager no problem, and my first my charge attack takes him off, and he doesn't tough. So I'm really happy that I don't have to spend any more focus here. Um, I just have the i think i put out a couple focus for some uh for some of the vectors but other than that i think i'm camping three or four focus in the middle here so at armor 18 no, you're camping five. Oh, five. so i guess i just up kept a spell and then decided the corollary is going to do the rest of the the focus shenanigans so i'm pretty healthy up here especially with ethan's army having minus two strength this turn and not being able to charge it's a big deal so I'm trying to figure out how it is I want to mess with this inverter. So first, I think I put down a few of the one-inch steppers uh, for those large bases, and this helps me figure out how closely I can skirt the uh, the pillars that are sitting here. Uh, the big thing I want to figure out is if I can get the inverter into both of these blood trackers. Um, and based on how I would need to move him, I can't quite get there at speed six. So uh, I opt to go with the uh, the repair unit. The uh, this isn't the algorithmic; just it's the OptiFX directive. Their names are going to get screwbally for me. So I've got two that can get onto the inverter and repair, and we end up getting a decent amount of boxes back. I think it was uh, that's six, seven boxes that I get back because they repaired D three plus one. And uh, that gets me fully functional and erases about half of, if not mo- almost all of the damage that those blood trackers did. Yeah, I think more than half. So the corollary decides to walk up and uh, dumps the f- the focus into the inverter. And uh, I'm, I think the next thing that I do here is I say, oh, never mind. We're going to change this target up a little bit so I can start inducting a little bit better. Um, because I forget that I have uh, iron aggression on him, and your computer's not broken, and the battery didn't die, so it's not my fault. My camera just kind of wigged out and decided to not record anything and not shut off. So it was the opposite problem of the battery dying. Somehow the battery just juiced it up to live beyond death. Um, regardless, it means that the uh, the camera wasn't going to record any of that. So this is the after effect of what what transpires once the corollary shifts focus over to the assimilator. The assimilator used its ground pounder to remove both of the uh, pillars assault, which then freed up the inverter to go off and walk or charge. I can't remember. He has iron aggression, so he does it for free anyways. And with his two initial melee attacks, he took out those two blood trackers and freed up my flag, which the uh, little attunement servitor ran up to score. And then my uh, conservator ended up unpacking with the focus he got from the uh, assimilator to charge a Tharn and killed that, overkilled it because he's still got a couple focus left. And uh, then my other ser- my other attunement servitor ran up to the bottom because that other the Tharn that's painted down there is just out of being able to contest that flag. So uh, I think I end up scoring one point this turn because there was something. No, scored I scored two. I scored two this turn. That was a different game. You have two to one. So, so that's where I'm at. Sorry for the camera issues. I wish I could explain it, but it was magic.
Yep, so Axis' feet is up, and if you don't know what that is, I'll just give you a quick reminder. It's neg 2 speed and strength and can't charge and make slam trample attacks, and he gets plus 2 speed and strength, so all my stuff can't do anything, really. You like, can still do stuff, it's just not the way you want to do it. <laughs> uh, feats that shut down charging are really strong in Brawl Machine, and I, I knew Axis' feet was going to be just a right old pain. Uh, and there we did the sun hammer damage because we forgot to roll down the conservator when the camera died. Or not, didn't die, but stopped recording because it was being really Yes, funky. thankfully the camera didn't die. When I saw what was happening, I thought, is this the end? Uh, <laughs> so now my blood... Sh I upkept both my spells uh, so that way I could apparate up and not proc uh, counter charge with my vengeance move. Uh, so the blood shaman moves up to get reach on the servitor, punches it, and then spell slaves a crevasse into the inverter because that's the only spell she can spell slave for Moss Hair because the rest of his are upkeeps, range self. Uh, at dice minus six because it's arm 18 or arm 19? Arm 19, so it was no Off damage seven. on that one. Yeah. So, like, it's to be expected. I just need to clear the flag. Uh, so now I really want to get Curse of Shadows on something. That way it can maybe do some damage and then boost some attacks with Ravagers, but I realized with the woods there and Mosser going down to speed three, he's just like, he just can't. So I have the Gorax Rylan run backwards a little bit, just to around the woods, so that way Go Mosser can activate, maltreat him, he does three to the three, but now I'm back up to seven, because I've actually... Yeah. I think he went up to eight, I, for whatever reason, I think it was eight. No, because I up kept Sunhammer, maybe I did drop Mirage, because I figured I'd have the distance to walk and engage where I needed. Yeah, because it doesn't look like any of those dudes move. So I think I did drop Mirage. Uh, I walk up, I put Curse of Shadows on the inverter, and then I spray him. And instead of boosting, I opt to put down a couple pillars and camp one. Uh, because I'm scared if I go naked, Mosser is very, very old man stats. And like if an assimilator even... Even at Rat 2, but boosted, like, there's a chance he hits me and blast damage could still do damage and then a battering ram. So, like, it might have been smarter to boost damage, but I didn't want to be You're just too being risky. conservative with him because I do have a... My arm, my almost entire army is in the middle of the table now. Yep, and, like, I, there's 100% I'm not doing much to it this turn. So there I have to respect counter charge threats so that Ravager is able to walk, engage the conservator, and engage the... Um, servitor. Cons conservator. And, servitor. And, yep. And then the top one just walks up to trying to make Fort Mosser. The, the Ravager kills the Servitor, so now he's got no solos on that side of the board, so I'm trying to leverage that for future turns because that Gobber Chef's just going to be over there forcing him to keep something within four just to be safe. Yeah, I can't afford to put move away from that flag with the Gobber there. Yep. Uh, then I believe here... Blood or a what am I doing? I believe a blood tracker because you just marked some damage. So I think yeah, a blood I think tracker you, just I, threw this a spear. is where I this is where I said I forgot that blood tracker existed. Yep. So now she's aiming to stay and not proc any counter charges, and then under feet even with neg two strength as a thrown weapon, she does decent. She rolls really well, and now here I'm putting up my rip horn. He has onslaught, so he can get through those woods or through that water. But I need to fake make Fort Moss there so an inverter doesn't get to me. And then I score one. So at two to two, I feel like I'm pretty well in this game and I haven't lost a lot of pieces, so I'm not feeling too worried there. I still have these pillars to contend with because one of the things about having a big battle group like this with some supportive pieces like attunement servitors and the opt effects directive, I don't have a great ability to pull these pillars down without putting big meaningful activations into them. So I believe I start off with trying to juggle where my focus is going to go because I've kind of got the corollary and the uh, algorithmic opt effects directive dispersion opt effects the ado algorithmic dispersion opt effects that's what it is um that guy is a little bit out of position to make sure that this inverter can get focus onto the corollary so uh i think i end up putting a couple on the assimilator and the conservator i i don't know why i'm trying to measure things out weird here with him because i think you want him to go through the woods 
and try and like threaten oh, me from the other side. So you're the, trying to free him up. This was where I was trying to get the assimilator to. I thought I was putting the ba- base next to the conservator. I was trying to see if the ass- assimilator could move around the the um, the conservator just because like these jacks, even though they float, they don't fly. So I can't go over my own guy, and here's where I sit here. I'm like, I just need tactician real bad right now. Mm. But uh, unfortunately, Ethan's been really good about not proccing any counter charges, and with counter charge on his turn, it would help unjam a lot of my stuff that's going on right now. So I decide to move the uh, the inverter over a little bit, which he takes some sun hammer damage, and then we decide to ground pounder again to get rid of these pillars because it really is like. He's the best one suited for the job. He has one attack that takes the pillars out, and boosting damage on those means that I only need an 8 to get rid of them, and uh, it allows me to induct that focus where it needs to go. I think the important thing to note is that the the inverter has lost its induction node or in interface node. Yep, so... So I, now some guys are coming up to repair that, though. I did not space them out enough, like... I figured he could ground pounder and get one just without hitting his own dudes, but I should have measured to make sure the one in front of the rip horn was outside the force. You'd have to choose, but that was just clearly I'm like a mistake on my part. Ground pounder gets around a lot of my tech, mm-hmm. so it's it's really unfortunate. It's not good for me to be using the activation of that jack to do it because he'd rather be doing other things, but I end up getting the interface node back up on the inverter, and then the uh, the... Um, Optifex Directive ends up going up and repairing him just to get him back up on his feet. He's not in the greatest of spots, but he's at least functional right now. And I believe the Corollary ends up going with a a full stack of three focus and throwing that onto the inverter. Uh, Next up, Axis goes, and I'm just kind of tucking him behind the forest to kind of stay safe from some of the things that might be coming towards him so there's no charges from... uh, I guess Mosair would never charge me, but like I'm just... If things don't go well with what I've just done here, which is unpacking the inverter into the rip horn, uh, this way uh, 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 Axis is a little bit more safe. So uh, I ended up doing a ton of damage with the macro pummeler because it's nice plus one. And then at POW 18 with the uh, the little chain fist that he has, I forget what it is. It's like was- some kind of arco flagellant or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, it, it ends up doing a bit decent bit of work too. And on my final attack for it, I end up leaving him on two boxes. But I think at some point I re- realize that uh, iron aggression is on him and uh, just take the extra attack. But Yeah, I'm at, at the beginning of my turn because it's dice minus two, so... You just need a four to kill, so we end up resolving that on my turn. Yep. Otherwise, the conservator goes up to this flag and takes off a Ravager. That means that I've, I haven't completely collapsed this bottom side. There's still that gobber there that i got to deal with, but uh, the bottom side's looking pretty good to me. I score one point, and Ethan scores one as well, so I think we're 3-3. Three three. Yep. So when my turn begins, I'm starting to think maybe I can rally back. Attrition-wise, if I take this inverter out with the goat and free up, free up some stuff, but then here within a minute, yep, there we go. Uh, Brian remembers Iron Aggression. I left the token back by the lake and didn't take it with him. And Iron Aggression just isn't a spell that I cast with any other caster that I play normally. So I was like, oh, yeah, this thing happened. Yep. Uh, so he did the damage there. Uh, he rolled the four to kill. Uh, so I'm doing my Vengeance Swings. They do nothing, really. Uh, yeah, I was just rolling dice. Uh, even with Curse of Shadows, I think they might have done a couple. So now Mosser has to go up, and he's like he's got erosion on his pow ten stick, so he's a weapon master. And I upkept Sunhammer, I upkept Curse of Shadows, so I'm charging, staying in the zone just to be cute, and I'm within eight of the Optifix, and I do my charge. I hit luckily with Mat five, and then I pretty sure you, I one you, shot you, him. Yeah, you blow him up. Yep. So now I didn't activate any of my Warbies first to maltreat. So now I've got to be cagey here. I crevasse. I hit. Or no, I spray burst, I think. And I think the spray misses with a five. And then I have to crevasse and hits with a six. And then I roll snake eyes for damage. Or no, the snake eyes was to hit the servitor because the servitor stayed on the flag. Yep, that's what it is. So I had to... I don't even think I got to put out a pillar this turn. No, no I, I think you, yeah, you were a little focus strapped. Yep. Because I didn't maltreat. 
and then I'm just trying to plan out what I can do because I know I have to send a Ravager up there, but I really want him to go on the Corollary, but I'd rather clear off that flag and take his solos out of the equation. So like if I charge the Optifix, I can mini feet, then overtake into the Servitor, and then kill there. So I'm, I screw up the activations and I do the Chieftain first and I eyeball the counter charge threat instead of actually measuring it. And fun fact, never do that. <laughs> Always put down the six inch <laughs> stick because like counter charge is just a real big gear check. So he hits. Luckily it's the Chieftain and it's a POW six so it doesn't break armor. But now it makes my angle all screwy so I can't go for the corollary and the ADO and the servitor. So now I have to pick. And I figure one charge and a bot attack isn't going to kill a corollary. So I decided to go for the um, scenario. So I miss. I have to buy. Hit with a six. I overtake. Into the servitor. I hit. Kill. And then no corpse from him because he's not living. And then, so now my only leverage really is that Brian's clock is really low. It's hard to see here. From it's like sub, sub two minutes. Yep, sub two minutes. So if I can keep the scenario game going, I can just drop pillars and contest. But he's really running out of miles to contest my flag, where my shaman has just kind of lived the whole game. Uh, my ravager charge on the, uh, the, the shooty jack didn't really do anything. Assimilator. Yep. Argus just moves up, and I'm pretty much just trying to throw dudes in the way. And then Gorex runs just to contest the zone more. I'm worried about Axis running to that flag, but then he's going to have a hard time keeping everything in control. And then I end, and I go to four. So starting up on the bottom of four, we did have a, a clock, sh an issue where, where Ethan's was, was off clock for a little bit. But um, I'm forwarding ahead and saying I've, I've taken my turns the way that I've taken them. So no matter what, um, my clock is running down and it's rough here. I, I still have a ton of pieces to work with, even though um, I'm missing just the one heavy. And Ethan's down a lot, too. So I'm starting to really, like, implode. Like, his army's just starting to evaporate away. There's not many Tharn left. There's not a whole lot of... Uh, there's not a lot of beasts left. I think there's a Gorax in the middle of the zone along with Argus. a dog. Yep. So part of me was thinking if at this point, maybe if I can clear the zone of the, the heavy or the two lights and the Tharn that maybe I could just start to make the, or get the scenario going on my own pace and try and contest his flag a little bit, maybe run my algorithmic opt effects, dispersion opt effects sorry onto one of the two flags and start scoring that it would make it so that ethan wouldn't be able to get over me and then by the time we'd end on turn five uh, i would be able to score a lot more points than he would be able to so i'd take the game that way but i instead end up trying to well not instead i think i'm just trying to figure out how i'm going to be activating everything and i think like several times i say to myself i'm not going to finish this game so uh i clock and I think uh, we, we ended up discussing, like, how I could get back into the game, or not how to get back into the game, but um, how it would work if I had, like, an extra 10 minutes um, or just extra time period, how I could contest meaningfully and start to score out to where it would be difficult for Ethan to bounce back. I really just wanted to math out, like, how does turn five work for or how does turn five look and i think if things go my way i could make it so that i score out more than he does and either that or he'd have to put his caster in really awkward places to do work but i think we came up pretty inconclusive overall um but it would have been an interesting one to see played out i think this is the first brawl machine game i've clocked out on and i think a lot of it has to do with how I needed to think about how induction worked and just my inexperience with convergence as a faction overall. But for sideboard, I don't have to do anything. Although when Ethan and I had talked about it, there's a lot of pieces in the convergence army that could sub in really easily. Um, like for this one, I could take out the accretion servitors and put in elimination servitors and then never have to worry about pillars. Um, for other matches where someone's bringing def 12 infantry elimination servitors would be really good. Um, there's also a lot of really good requisition points or requisition options for, uh, 
for convergence in general, whether you're in Clockwork Legion or Destruction Initiative, that can plug in really well into the sideboard. Plus, the lights for convergence are ridiculous. So, like, you can there's a lot of tool a lot of tools you can use there. But I just opted to not do it because I just wanted to get an experience with this list first. Yeah, and I opted just to not change anything because I didn't really feel like any of my support pieces would do anything different. Like maybe the arc node would have been fine, but my 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 stuff's not easy to swap out. Like I'd have to swap a unit, and I felt like I needed to just not lose blood trackers bottom of one, and then yeah. I could actually leverage them. Yeah, don't don't let the don't let the weird drift tint your perspective. So I opt to go first, being the person who lost, because I feel like uh, getting access further up the table right away is going to be really important to me. So um, my deployment isn't all that much different from the way it was before. I think my conservator and assimilator kind of flip spots. But other than that, I, I think I put two servitors on the outside or the bottom side of the screen to just kind of be more more scory threatening down there. And then I put one servitor on that top side because I feel like I can defend that a little bit better. Um, and everything runs up. Uh, Axis, this is like fun with the, the ADO or the algorithmic dispersion opt effects. He also works as an arc node. So even though I've ran my inverter out of range, uh, I'm able to arc the spell iron aggression through him onto the inverter because he's the one I'd really like to have those boosted attacks and free charge against with the value weapons. And then I put up onslaught and pass the turn. So my bottom of one is all about positioning and trying because like I need to respect him feeding bottom of one in there or top of two and there I'm measuring with feet the assimilator can walk far enough into the woods to see through it so I can't even hide the blood trackers behind the woods so I opt to run them wide again but this time spacing out very far so that way his drifts would have to be really good for him to clip more than just two or one or two. Um, and I opted, like, Axis is a really good counter to the shenanigans Mossair brings because of the all the counter charges makes it hard for me to run somebody up there in Sands of Fates to do some cute crevasses and stuff like that. So there Mossair goes, same as before, Mirage on the uh, Ravagers, Sunhammer on himself, and then I feet as a funny screw you to Convergence because his feet does nothing against convergence because if you don't know can't leech fury can't have fury leech from you and you can't power up which none of those apply to convergence yep. so playing down a feat man yeah sun hammer is a feat uh, against me it is over the course of like four turns if you roll max damage it's good but it's so v like volatile yeah. so now i'm just trying to respect with the ravagers because i throw one up in threat range of his feated heavy but the rest are running wide to stay outside of the 19-inch threat on Axis's feet because he can walk five. I didn't give him a charge target on this side of the board, so I'm just trying to stay outside his vector. So if he doesn't feet, the Ravagers can maybe do some work. Starting turn two, I know that I want to feat this turn, even if I'm not going to get the things that I really wanted to. I mean, getting the Riphorn Seder is a big deal, and making sure that the Blood Trackers can't charge their prey target is also nice, especially that considering their weapons are thrown, it debuffs their shooting too. So it's just a good unit to, to exert the feat on. So I'm trying to figure out ways that I can uh, make this feat go in ways that uh, will affect the table the most. And one of the ways that I can do this is by having Axis go up and charge one of the blood trackers and unpack on that side. It puts me real close to the rip horn, but I think that uh, getting him over here on this side means I'm also getting into the position to start threatening that flag so that maybe I can kind of hook Axis around the edge and then those Ravagers are going to have to kind of play keep up to get back to the side of the table where all these flags are because that's where the bulk of my stuff should be. So uh, I think I opt first to activate the Corollary just so I can power up and then give some focus over to the, uh, um, the Assimilator. Uh, this is good and bad right because the assimilator gets to go and do a bunch of cool stuff 
but um, the corollary is also far back from Axis again, and now I don't get to increase my uh, my control range. So I think now I'm uh, trying to figure out where I need to put these servitors because I want to keep them out of threat of the uh, Ravagers, but it's really hard to do. So I end up putting one out at max max threat. It's inside the Ravager threat, but it means that Ethan's going to have to, like, throw way off into it which i'm pretty sure is valuable to him so it's not like i've done some kind of cool big brain move here or anything but uh i just wanted him to be a little bit more relevant so i just kept him further up instead of back where he should be uh next up the um assimilator was it the assimilator shot something yep. and mi- he shot, oh, he shot and shot and killed it so he was able to transfer the focus over um to the uh uh inverter who i believe or no, he, he moved it to the conservator. And then uh, the inverter just walked up to get out of the way of uh, access. There's really nothing that I can unpack the inverter into that's going to make me like worry about anything. Plus, he was kind of in my way anyhow. So Axis charges in, and I think it takes him a couple swings to even hit her because I'd rather just like go for the extra sevens to hit since I have the like double swing ability per focus I spend. And I, maybe I spend one extra focus here so it takes four attacks to get her down, but it happens, and uh, I feet and catch just about everything on the table outside of those Ravagers. And the Shaman. I think, yeah, the Shaman was out by just a hair. Um, the Conservator ends up... Uh, running and inducting back to the corollary, but doesn't really have anything to do with it. So this is a lot of me kind of actualizing this uh, this swing around idea where I could try and draw my new line of engagement at the back side of the or at the bottom side of this table and uh, play the game out that way. So my feet's over and Axis's feet is up. Uh, on that top half of the board is pretty much dead to me for a turn because I can't do anything. Uh, so there, I'm vengeancing forward three inches. Yeah, and I didn't want to give you the vengeance trigger here, but like if you give me a Ravager, I have to take it because I just need to get rid of the extra attacks there. And then I end up upkeeping Mirage because you have to upkeep it first to get the benefit. I'm just pre-measuring who I can get into. So with Mirage, I could get two on the inverter and one on the... Assimilator, uh, assuming it gets weird with that the servitor in the way, so I'd have to try and clear a lane. Uh, but I think I could wing it with the mirage going slightly to the side. So now I mirage over, and then since mirage is in the control phase, it has to have an after upkeeping. So you have to upkeep mirage to get the benefit of it. So it's a weird spell where it's like it's a three focus investment because you have to cast it for two the first turn, then upkeep it to finally get a ben- benefit. But I upkeep Sunhammer, so I'm sitting on six. I'm trying to respect countercharge threats from the conservator in the back if I go in on the inverter. Because the inverter is the jack that scares me the most. Because I don't think his other heavies, like the conservator, I don't know if it can one round my Riphorn. Whereas a macro pummeler and the POW 17 stick on the inverter can definitely one round my guy with iron aggression and a free charge. Uh, so the Gorex goes, just wilds for three, because I'm going to be maltreating him, which I do right now. Do three to the five. And I think you make a comment here about, huh, isn't Sunhammer fun against you? Yes, I did. Yep, your maltreatment has been rolling gangbusters against you. That yep. poor Gorex. So now I get cute, and I put down a pillar blocking the conservator's line of sight. So now I can charge the inverter with a Ravager and not proc countercharge from that side. And now I'm just debating where to spend the second one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a second to say it was funny how you were talking about how my counter charge shenanigans stop some of your shenanigans, but then your pillars stop those shenanigans. So there's just all sorts of shenanigans banning. Yeah. Whereas mine, like, I have to actively try and stop counter charge where, like, yours is just a passive ability. The shaman walks to the flag just so I'm going to be scoring that this turn. And then I'm just trying to keep the pillars out. I move your feet token. There, one blood tracker moves up to engage Axis. Axis. Just to stop his counter charge. And then as you can see here, we had some camera issues. This was this this one actually was a dead battery. So the, the camera didn't like flip out or anything on this one. Just dead battery. Just typical standard practice on big top gaming, I guess. 
like I said, one day we'll start an OnlyFans account and finally get money for a real nice battery. Exactly. Uh, so basically what happened on my turn is one Ravager that's in the forest charged into the inverter, and I didn't put down a stick and measure counter charge threat, so the assimilator was able to counter charge him, kill him. I toughed, but now I'm knocked down. So then those two that went up there charged the assimilator that counter charged, and then I had a Ravager charge the... Uh, servitor that was contesting the flag so I could run my goober. It's worth noting my charges did really, really bad. And like I didn't cripple anything, but I left him enough where like sun hammer damages could do some work. If I rolled max damage, I could take out his induction node, interface node, because it's not an induction node. It's an interface node that inducts. Yep. Confusing names. So I score two to his nothing. So I'm up two to zero. <laughs> So I've got to try and unpack, like Ethan's kind of come in and caved in the bottom or from the bottom side into the top side that I'm trying to get into, which I'm not too horribly concerned with. It just means that um, I'm going to need to try and contest that bottom flag as much as I can and uh, try and do as much work in the middle as I can. So I'm, things are getting a little rough with this assimilator. I think it's got maybe... In column four, it's got three boxes left, and when that third box goes down, it takes down his interface node. So I've decided to get a little bit tricky, and not tricky so much as I decided to get a little bit risky, and decided to um, use the corollary to throw all of the focus onto the assimilator. And now I walk up, and sure as shit, Ethan rolls, rolls the category or the column and the amount of damage to take out the interface no- or interface node. So all the focus drops, I'm pretty sure. And uh, because it's like a cortex, I think, that just drops focus when it goes out. So that just like craps on my whole plan. I couldn't get an Optifex directive in range to repair. I just couldn't get it. It was about a half inch away. And uh, I think I lament the, the, the fact of what's happened to me right now with Sunhammer. And uh, I think what we say was like a nine percenter. Uh, it was a one in nine because your column three was out. So it was like 11%. So chance. I had a one in three chance of rolling to column three or four. And I had a one in three chance in rolling a five or six. So it wasn't the, the odds were in my favor, but it just didn't work for him. So now I'm not able to do the work that I needed to with those ravagers to kind of make them a non-issue. Uh, there still would be the one ravager left, but I think just collapsing that zone and not having to worry about the bottom part of it would be really nice for me. It means that I could swing the rest of my battle group up. So now I've decided to take my uh, inverter that was supposed to clear out every single blood tracker in the universe with all the focus he was going to get, and he just gets to take out two now. So I've still got one hanging around here, but I've at least done the work to clear off my flag. No, not yet. Um, Axis has, I I thought about taking a free strike from one, but without having Pathfinder, I can't get through this water to take out both of them. So uh, I decide to kind of back up and say, I'm going to see if the uh, Optifex Directive can do some work to these blood trackers. So I decide to give them a press forward order after I hem and haw here for a minute. You can see me tapping my fingers like, what am I going to do? I think the interface going down like, it just it like, really rattled you. Yeah, it rocked my world for sure. Like every plan I had was like built around making sure that I could. This was like one of the turns where I could showcase here's what convergence can really do in Brawl Machine, and it's take very few resources and turn them into huge activations. Being able to recycle all this focus around and not being able to do that with the assimilator really hurt my turn. Yep. So I decide to get the servitor up to take the flag or to ca- contest the flag, and now my Optifex directive is charging into the blood tracker that's engaging Axis, and this is just so I can try and hail Mary a nine to hit, and uh, the first one ends up cracking her and uh, ends up breaking armor. So that was good. One thing went well. It allows Axis to charge this other blood tracker that's contesting my flag, and uh, this one he gets without having to spend focus. So I'm just going to camp the extra focus that he's got here and run to score this flag so I'm not completely locked out of scenario. Yeah, I got extremely lucky with the interface node going down because that really hammered his inability to clear that side completely and me- and contest my flag because we realize I'm up three to one 
if I can clear the servitor on the flag and contest his flag, I win. So I vengeance over and I pop the servitor. So now all I need to do is drop down a pillars of salt uh, onto his objective because it is a model. And then I think there was one turn even where you thought you cleared your flag and then you didn't because yeah, there's still yeah. pillars there. Like them being models is just so good. And then there I mirage forward the rip horn and because I'm like, well, I do have threat to uh, your caster. And I was like, ah, screw it. I'm not going to make you watch me try and kill him with a primal to rip horn. So I just plop down some pillars and then I end my turn and go up uh, five to one. Yep. So I think uh, overall this Axis list is pretty strong. I think we had a discussion about the Optifex Directive. They were printing money in this game, but honestly in Brawl Machine they feel like they're probably a better sideboard thing to bring in in case you need them. I, I don't know how many things in Brawl Machine are going to be able to like just one round heavies, and I maybe it's more than I think, but like Ethan's list isn't really set to one round heavies. Also like your damage rolls were kind of allowing me to be able to heal a bunch of stuff back. They, they weren't doing a lot of work. Yeah, it was all the repairs you got were chip damage from, like, the three or four blood trackers I would throw into you. Yeah. And then, like, cause I've, a rip horn can one round a heavy. If I can get, like, three to four ravagers on a heavy with curse, I can one round it. Mm -hmm. It's just, like, the blood tracker damage you were just kind of, like, negating. Yep. I mean, you were letting me, like, I would get a few through the, after the repairs, but, like... Oh, that actually brings up a nice topic I wanted to talk about. What's your opinions on repair rolls? I didn't bring it up during our game because I figured this would be a nice discussion. You rolled both of them at the same time. How do you feel about that? Because I think rules as written, you have to do one at a time because it's an action. So say like you, the first guy goes up, repairs, he only rolls a one. So now you have to pick and choose which columns you're going to repair without knowing what the next guy is going to roll. Like, yeah. what's your opinion on that? I've never, in the history of my games, ever made an opponent roll them one at a time. I've thought about it, but I was like, eh, I don't care enough. But I, I just wanted to get your opinion, because I that was something I realized during our game, but I never, like, I didn't bring it up. For me, with, with what I was doing there, and this wasn't me doing it consciously, like, I was just like, oh, I'm going to repair. And for the jacks that had the issues or it needed certain systems up, it was like one box was in the system. So with D3 plus one, it seemed like I wasn't going to have a lot of problems bouncing around to try and get two systems back up. But honestly, you should just roll it one at a time so you don't get some kind of like unseen advantage in terms of like figuring out like, okay, well, I need to get these systems up. So which boxes do I put them in? And then when you roll in the middle range, like because one column might need three to get back up and functioning. No, that doesn't work either. I, I really don't know if it matters, to be it, honest with you. It really only matters when you get to allocate the extra boxes that you're healing on the hull. Like, say, instead of rolling, the, you roll the first one, and then you roll the second one, and now you know like where you have an extra two to three boxes. Like, you could heal the three leading up to your cortex or stuff like that, or space amounts. Yeah, I guess like you'd, you'd tinker with it a little bit. It so. basically allocates like where the hull repairs are going to go. And like I said, I've never been that guy and brought it up in a game. But it's something like I've thought about mid game before, but I'm like I'm, I just don't care enough. Yeah, I'd say it's probably better to roll that one at a time, just so you don't have to introduce the issue, at all if it becomes one. So like I was just doing shorthand rolls and and running running repairs. So no, and even I've done it before. Yeah, and this is just a weird side tangent that I just thought of because I remember thinking about it during our game. And then, like, us just talking about repairs yep. made me think about it again. And I just... Because usually they were getting double repairs. Yep. Because that's usually what happens. Mm -hmm. And even, like, with medicates and stuff like that, like, the only time it really doesn't matter is Infernals because their healing just goes in a straight line. Yeah. But... Yeah, it straight up doesn't matter. But I think that's my side tangent over unless other people have comments that they, like, what their opinions are on it. Because it's just one of those weird things. I think everybody rolls them together when they have multiple heals instead of doing just the one at a time. Yeah. And I think that's us as a player base just saying, screw screw rules as written, we're just going to roll it. Yeah, it, it, like I said, it, it doesn't matter a ton, but I can see where it could be an issue. So it probably, probably would be better to roll them at one at a time, but it is what it is. Yeah, so side tangent over. 
back to Convergence talk. Yep, so Convergence in general seems pretty strong in Brawl Machine being able to take very few resources and applicate or broadcast them out to the full full army. So like playing with a lot of heavies just feels really good. And you've got enough good do work lights to make sure that you can transfer that focus along those two. So you could really get like a big brick of of heavies and lights or just vectors in general and make a, a cool like list out of it. I think that the corollary is definitely a really huge part of their game plan, so it feels like it's still just in Brawl Machine. Even though he's six points or a requisition in Clockwork, he's almost mandatory. Yeah, I I agree the same way, because a lot of the Convergence casters have strong feats, and they want to leverage that big controller. And just like that free three focus a turn, Yeah, if you can do the induction ranges right with an ADO out there and like reoccurring it back. I, most of the time when I played Convergence, I was using huge bases, so it made... like inducting back easier because it's like oh my corollary gives three to my prime axiom it walks up oh i induct three back to my corollary repeat every turn yeah the faction in general speaking of prime axioms it's really easy to play without the huge bases like we don't get nemo 4 we don't get tps and we don't get uh any kind of prime anything um i think that might dissuade some people i know i had some issues trying to build an iron mother list that didn't have a huge base because that's so such a really good piece for her but in general this axis list feels good lucant feels great with uh within in clockwork legions too like there's just a lot of room for convergence to blossom in brawl machine with the way that their focus management works and all of their pieces seem to have this dual purpose sense to them that i think really applies to brawl machine well so i'd look forward to trying to learn the faction more and play it more in brawl machine not to mention just playing it in 75 points but this was a really good test for seeing how i how convergence would treat me in brawl machine i think it worked out pretty well yeah i think going back on what you said convergence can be really good i think we talked about like pretty much all their casters can excel in brawl machine in my opinion Synthurion gets a little bit weird because the synergy at 25 points is weird and i have i'm not happy with what they did with his feet like they said it was a lateral change but like it feels like a nerf it feels like no value added yeah because like Which, instead of free charges you get a free focus but if you're already inducting three focus along the whole way like when someone says sideways value or lateral value they essentially mean it's a non-value added service that they did yeah. for his feet and that's what makes it feel bad like they didn't do anything it's not like it's not like Synthurion was out there putting up huge numbers or anything, and he wasn't changed in a way to make him better, per se. He just was no value added. The The time and hours put into changing Synthurion were uh, functionally wasted. Yeah, because like, he took a big hit in the Mark II, the Mark III transition, and then like he's just never recovered. And just I because thought, of the synergy chain. Well, the synergy, Reconstruct can't go on huge bases yeah. anymore, and like just little things like that, but... I had hoped he would come out stronger from the six. I thought he, I always thought he was cool. Like he's got that cool spell that gives neg two speed, and you can't charge, or maybe magnetic it stop hold. Charging. I thought I, does it stop charging? I can't remember. I think but, it. Well, of course it used to, yeah. but doesn't anymore probably. But like he's low on my radar because like I used to play convergence and I sold him off back when I got into my merc craze because like lock is a whole bunch of fun even without a prime axiom. Mom's a bunch of fun. Big Daddy Lucant can just walk up the board with his POW 16, POW 18 spear. And, like, man, Lucant is a bitch to kill. Yeah, I was it was really close to playing him in Brawl Machine, but I just was having a hard time landing on a list in, like, the two hours I had to put it together. Um, so the uh, he's definitely one that I'd want to try, though. Yeah, he's a bunch of fun. I've never played him without a Prime Axiom because that's what I used to play with him was Clockwork Legions with a Prime Axiom for Servitors, but, like, watcher inverters positive charge everywhere like ah oh, in his feet yeah his feet's really good it's it's like kind of striker but better uh, like better ish it's yeah it's, it's neg one armor but you get a bunch of healing out of it yeah which we've already said is kind of weird but other than that i think this this moss air list that you put down um my list had some tools to try and mitigate some of the things that you were doing, so it, it felt like it wasn't a bad matchup, but I could definitely see if someone was bringing a list that didn't have these kind of high pow attacks that didn't really need to be close to influence the pillars. This could be really difficult for someone. You're just paying two points to put down essentially a solo that exists for as long as you want it to, or if, if, if I can't break it, you know. 
Yeah, and like we talked about, like if you would have had elimination servitors in your sideboards, like yeah, then pillars become non-issue. They just become a I can test on my turn, and they're not even a problem for you to kill. Whereas now, like you have to waste something to kill it, and it's still just a two cost. I can test because where Mosser is sitting right now, like I can contest any flag and the circle zone without moving, and that feels really strong in Brawl Machine, even if. And like this didn't even showcase like his assassination potential. Yeah, Axis was stuff. pretty respectful of that this game, I think. Yeah, because like Other I could Doppler bark him eleven and curse. inches within a riphorn. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like he's he's a beefy boy. Yeah, yeah. arm def fourteen, arm eighteen with fo- the ability to camp like two to four focus each turn is pretty decent. Yeah. No, and Axis's feet is never going to be not good. It's also really hard to come in and assassinate someone when they've got a counter charging macro pummeler. Yeah. Just counter charges everywhere, are real strong. Like I don't think Axis is ban worthy. Like he's no, he's just good. He is just solid. Yeah, like, his feet's know. great. Yeah, that feet is just so good. His spell list is a little meh for influence. Like he throws out a battering ram every once in a while, but his 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 spell list, like I can push stuff around with uh, unstoppable force. I can fix any pathfinder issues on my little spider heavies. And uh, Razor Wall is Razor really Wall, good in yeah, Machine. When I had used it earlier in the game and kind of glazed over it, um, that was a pretty good play for me. It meant that there were no charges coming into that inverter, and it, it just like shut down a whole area of influence and meant they had to throw spears, which isn't like the worst thing for them in the world, but they definitely would probably have preferred to charge that inverter instead of chucking spears. I mean, it's kind of a wash. They're thrown spears or weapon masters, but yeah. their melee ones aren't. Mm-hmm. But, like, Razor Wall against melee infantry just is, like, you plunk it down. It's like, well, you can't charge my heavies. Yeah, it's like... Even it's, if I haven't feed it. It's like a better Wall of Fire, I think. Like, because you, you just take your one point, whereas Wall of Fire is, like, you get a POW 12. Yeah, Wall of Fire is for medium bases and Razor Wall is for single wound. Yeah. But overall, really good game. I look forward to playing some more Convergence, and I hope you enjoyed the uh, the rollout for them on the channel.